and I'm very pleased to say that joining us from his home, it is superstar racer of two wheels and four. It is Josh Kegel. Hello, Josh. Hi, man. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you very much for joining us here on Motorsport Radio. Uh, so, uh, Josh, for those who, who uh, don't actually know about uh, you, because uh, you've been in two kind of different paddocks of the past uh, five or six years or so, um, you originally uh, grew up racing bikes and, uh, and, and, and you was making your way into BSB, it seemed, uh, up until about uh, 2012, 2013, didn't you? And then you made, the, uh, and you made a big switch to cars. Yeah, I was. Uh, the, to be honest, the plan was for 2013 to go to to BSB, and then uh, yeah, we ended the season with a big crash, which obviously wasn't ideal. And uh, yeah, we kind of made a. I, I made a decision. We made a decision um, to kind of walk away from the job, really, uh, which was difficult. I've done. I've done it since I was six. So after a little bit of reflection over the winter, um, I, yeah, I didn't want to walk away from from racing. Cause it's all I know. And uh, yeah, cars basically were where we wanted to go. It gave me the opportunity to still do what I love, but a little bit with the odds in my favour. So yeah, I jumped at the chance. My dad was behind me, and uh, all my sponsors stuck behind me. So yeah, it was nice, nice to to be able to go and still go and have a go, really. Well, yeah, it is. It is kind of well. It is very, very unusual to uh, to have someone like yourself who who makes that switch and and tries a bit of both. I'll get on to. Uh, asking you uh, about comparisons for later on. Uh, but first of all, this season, though, uh, in 2017, um, you were racing quite a lot um, in the uh, Audi Sport uh, TT Cup. Um, somewhat of a veteran in that now, um, you in, in that in the past few years, and uh, making your, your, I think, your debut in the Blancpain Endurance Cup this year. How was it overall? Yeah, it, it's been a, a mega year, to be honest. Um, it's been one in at the deep end, but sort of runs in my uh, history really we don't kind of do things by halves um i'm managed by tim sugden and tim kind of i think likes the idea of having a bike race and switching to cars and tim's a big believer in putting me in at the deep end really because it's kind of sink or swim um i grew up in the ishroko cup and then tt cup and ultimately speaking we did want to go endurance racing um very fortunate that I got the opportunity to to go with WRT and with Audi and sort of continue that relationship. So yeah, we just got on with it. To be fair, um, turned up at Monza for the first test this year. I'd literally never driven a, a GT3 car, never driven rear wheel drive race car. Full stop. Um, we're in the team briefing. Actually, it was quite funny. There was there was me, Dries Van Tor, um, Robin Frins, all you know, all the guys, all the big guys were there. Yeah. You know, and, uh, team manager said who's never driven at Monza before and I sort of stuck my hand up and everyone looked at me a little bit gone out um, at which point none of the guys knew I'd never driven a GT3 car either like so I'm sure they'd have been uh, a little bit more shocked at that point as well but the um, it, I mean it, as Timo says to me if it's got four wheels and a steering wheel mate you can drive it and I kind of just adopt that policy we just get on with it and learn as we go um, the guys in the team were, were fantastic it's it was very much like a, a, a progression from TT Cup, really. You know, everyone's there to see you improve. And as long as you just go out with an open mind. I mean, it, within a couple of sessions, to be honest, I felt quite comfortable. Um, so, yeah, it, you know, it's been it's been fantastic. And then, obviously, we've got the, the chance to go and drive the TT again for the last two races, which was nice. Um, that was a nice that you never really get a chance to sort of step backwards in your career, really. You're always moving forwards. And it it was quite nice to get a chance to go back to my old championship uh, in a competitive way and kind of gauge, I guess, my own progression, really. Because the in the blank panel, it's such a depth of talent and skill that it's quite easy to get lost and even lost within your own uh, judgment of how you're progressing, really. So to, to go back to TT, you know, it sort of just showed just quite how much I've learned, which was nice. Well... Yeah, the uh, the uh, you, you you did uh, I think make your debut in the Audi Sport TT Cup. I think it was like 2015 or something like that. Um, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Mate. Um, so and and your first car race, um, according to your website, anyway, um, 
Josh um, was uh, well was as you as you mentioned the uh, Sirocco R Cup uh, and yep. the uh, and also that same season you did the uh, the Miltec uh, Volkswagen Racing Cup as well. Um, but why why that side of things? I mean, why why not any other championship? Why specifically um, that? Well, to be honest, we're a, a Volkswagen dealer. That's our family business. Ah, so. Okay. Ultimately speaking, uh, well, it was actually a good friend of my dad's, Peter Winnie. Uh, he was racing in the VW Cup, and he used to come for me. He was boss of VW uh, CV UK at the time. Uh, he used to come for, for meetings with my dad, and he knew I raced bikes. And He always used to say to my dad, oh, I'll get Josh in a car, and we always kind of shrugged it off. But then when the opportunity uh, arose to have a go, um, we rang Peter and went about organising the test, basically. So... That was kind of how we fell into the VW Cup. And then we got involved with Tim. Uh, Tim, also at the time, was looking after Daniel Lloyd, and Daniel did the Shroco Cup. Mm. So yeah, I think in the UK, a lot of people kind of don't look that far afield. Um, when it, in reality, you know, the Shroco Cup and the T, what was the TT Cup, you struggle to get such a fantastic platform for young guys to learn, really. Um, in many ways, it's like being at school. But I think sometimes you need that. And uh, it's a shame that I think it's not on more people's radar, really. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, that's kind of how we fell down that route, really. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Really, it's um, it's a uh, a lot of people for whatever reason. Maybe the it, maybe it's because it's usually on another package of of things that they go there to see. If it's I don't know uh, British GT or DTM or in in whatever it is case. Um, but it's it's uh, maybe it is a bit overlooked, um, and certainly from um, maybe maybe your point of view, you had a bit of a weird route into it because of the dealership side of things coming from bikes anyway. So I, 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 it, the the whole thing's weird, Josh. To be honest, the whole the whole thing um, basically. Uh, but I did want to uh, go back and, and ask you um, about bikes though, because that's where you. you, you you cut your teeth in in learning your race craft and stuff and you started out um i think with the holland district youth motocross championship that would be true tell, um, tell us more yeah well um basically my sister rode horses actually and my dad's way of appeasing me was by buying me a bike um which was probably the most expensive thing he's ever bought me truth be told because uh 28 years later i'm still still driving around in circles but the um I got my first bike when I was three, um, and then obviously the natural progression was Dad asked me if I wanted to do a race, and then we kind of just went, and it, one thing leads to another. Um, yeah, so I grew up racing motocross. Uh, yeah, I had a, had a good time of it, enjoyed it, learnt a lot. Um, then, unfortunately, I had a lot of injuries, to be fair, when I was quite young, so uh, switched to road racing uh, because it was safer, we thought. And, uh, yeah, then I had a good I'd shot at that. We did... Uh, Triumph Triple Challenge, British Super Stock 600, Super Sport 600, and we're kind of leading towards BSB. And then got to a point with that where I realised that I was lucky to lucky to still be walking, really, and we kind of got out whilst we could. Um, but, yeah, it, you know, bikes, I, I'd never change anything uh, that I've done. It sort of makes me who I am, and uh, I still love it to this day, to be honest. A lot of my mates still race. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, it's just kind of all character building, as you'd say. Yeah, um, that's the that's one of the those words that we usually hear racers who've gone through a bit of a tough time, and uh, luckily you came out of it and 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 had the sense to switch to four wheels um, whilst you still could. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, and to be honest, I'm also in a fortunate position that I was allowed to switch. Uh, true. Yes, you had the opportunity, and, and maybe many many riders don't even know about maybe because they've never tried it and two wheels is all they ever know so they carry on doing that yeah well to be honest i kind of dropped into that and no you know you start your career and you work really hard and you build your sponsors up and your sponsors love bikes and mm. it's kind of what you do um there's never really a, a point that's an easy point to say actually i don't want to do this anymore and uh we're really lucky that my sponsors have been there a long time and they ultimately speaking help me because it's me 
and uh, you know, I am really lucky to have guys that have that opinion because I know there's a lot of sponsors out there that you know just see a sticker on a bike and and that's kind of what the, what they get. Whereas I'm fortunate that everyone stood by me and gave me another opportunity with the cars, really. So it, it you know, I am lucky the circumstance I was in, really. I got the chance. Uh, a lot of my mates who race bikes literally, you know, they either race bikes or they do nothing. Yeah, that is again very true. Um, and yeah, so I mean, it's it, I, I suppose I, I, it, I've been thinking about maybe asking you this, but because the way that uh, maybe bike racers think, and I know you're not a bike racer okay. anymore, um, but maybe you, you know what I'm going to ask you. Um, you never quite lose your love and your passion for bikes, even though it might have hurt you in the past. Uh, it's it's like a tormented love of of bikes, isn't it? I suppose. But if if the car racing side of things ever sort of dried up for you, would you consider two wheels, or is is it completely off the table now for you? No, it's about yeah, it's completely off the table for me. Um, I took a decision to walk away for my own reasons, and obviously was lucky to get a chance in cars. But yeah. It, for me, bikes is done. I still love it. Uh, if I was sat there and watching, watching anything, it'd be bikes, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of my friends still do it. We've got the TT every year. The um, Yeah, for me, that ship sailed. Uh, I still love it. Can't really explain the, the relationship. But, uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with what I'm doing for the minute. I think I'm always of the opinion that when I walk away, I want to walk away at the highest level I can. I don't kind of want to. I, I wouldn't like to sort of step backwards and feel like i was finishing on a low really i kind of think that i want to do it as as well as i can for as long as i can and when the day comes that we can't then that's the day that uh, you know i sort of walk away gracefully really and you like i like i've already said i think you you've you've made a sensible decision it's not for me to say the right or wrong decision but it's certainly sensible because i've i've i've, I've said many times in the past uh, on our bike show that we have on motorsport radio um that um you know i've got so much respect for um you riders and uh i have no clue why they don't do do something sensible like race a car instead and and you did so um but uh we, we um us humans think differently to you racers i suppose um but yeah it's just one of those things um you also competed as well and uh was it uh last year you competed and the year before or might have been 2014 in the 24 hour the dubai 24 hours as well so you've yep. actually done quite a few endurance racing and was you in the race of remembrance as well yeah we um I did Dubai a couple of years on the back. Well, I did uh, Dubai 2014 and then 2016, missed 15 out. Um, I'm actually doing Dubai again. I've just signed a deal to do Dubai this year, actually. Um, so, yeah, that's really exciting. I'm doing that with Sorg in a, a BMW 235. Um, it's a nice fun race, nice way to start the year, to be honest. Not as much pressure. Gets your gets your eye back in. It's a nice place to be. Um, but, you know, at the same time, it's... It's serious, serious fun, as we'd like to say. And, um, yeah, I, I did the race members with Miltec. Um, met Steve when I first started in the VW Cup, sort of stayed friends. Then we did Dubai with me and uh, Tom Onslow Cole and a few other guys did uh, Dubai with, in the Miltec Diesel Golf. Got to know Steve a little bit better. You know, really good guy. Supported me, actually, for the to do the last couple of races in the TT this year. And, uh, yeah, came to Germany with us and just said, what are you doing in, what are you doing in October? Um, on November even, I think. Uh, do you fancy doing race remembrance? I sort of jumped at the chance, really. Uh, didn't quite end so well. We had a bit of contact under a safety car from a from a back marker, which kind of put us out. But up to that point, we were we were doing good. It sounds like you have a um, a, uh, a a diverse um, range of interests, anyway, in in cars. Ultimately, though, I mean, what is the? Do you have an an ultimate goal? where you're looking to perhaps aim towards? I mean, previously, I understand it might have been BSB. But what's your ultimate uh, career goal now, Josh? It's a difficult question, to be honest, mate. It sort of evolves every year. Um, I mean, Blancpain Endurance, to be honest, is, takes a bit of beating um, in terms of 
where you want to be. Obviously, I'd love to do Le Mans 24 hours. Um, is that possible? Uh, Could, do, do you have options to do something like that? Yeah, I mean, Tim looks after me, but, you know, unfortunately, the way the world in motorsport, you can, you know, you can do most things if you want to pay. Um, now, yes, we could do Le Mans 24. Um, whether we do is a different thing. Whether I'm, you know, whether an opportunity presents itself, where if an opportunity did present itself, then yeah, I'd jump at the chance. Uh, I mean, if you'd have asked me two years ago if I was going to start Spa 24 Hours in a factory Audi um, R8, then I would have probably laughed. And we did yeah. that. So, uh, you know, never say never, to be honest. Um, it's GT3 is just difficult at the minute. With uh, with how much it costs, I think everyone's looking towards GT4 uh, mm. in in many respects. Just because doing GT3 is achievable, um, but it's not sustainable. GT3, perhaps. Well, it's sustainable uh, if all you're doing is racing. But when unfortunately the level in Blancpain so high, you need to do a lot of testing, and um, you know, testing a GT3 car is eye watering. To be to honest with you, you know, you could do. I could do two test days in a GT3 car for, uh, and sorry, I could race in like, for example, VW Cup for a year for for less than I could do two test days in a GT3. Wow. Um, how do, how yeah. does that compare to um, something like Supersport as well? Those um, types of costs. I mean, at the time when we were doing Supersport, the only thing you know is bikes, so it, kind of seems expensive um and i, and I know it was a, f uh, a few years ago as well so yeah um i mean to be honest how does it compare you could probably do two years of volkswagen cup for one year of super spot okay that's interesting so, to know yeah i mean the problem is british super spot in all the smaller formulas in that respect everyone's trying to get so much out of them that it actually isn't that cheap because everything's that much on the limit that you know it actually costs you more to be there it's pretty much like gt3 was and now is you know it started off as a, a cheaper option it's now everyone's trying to get the most out of it so it's now the most expensive option the same thing will happen with gt4 you know gt4 is effectively going to be the more cost effective way to go racing in a gt car for the next few years but surely speaking when that gets more popular yeah yeah, exactly. It, probably within the next five, six years, that'll get back to a point where everyone's thinking, geez, we need to look at other ways to to get the cost down. Like, um, I mean, you could, you know, you're buying family houses for, for less than you can go racing GT3. Yeah. <laughs> um, People sell the win. houses to go racing as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, remortgage racing, it's uh, it's got a popular team name in the bike paddock. Like I would imagine it is in the car paddock, but yeah, it, You've just got to kind of, you can't lose reality. You can't lose touch with reality just quite how much it costs. And uh, you kind of talk about figures like like telephone numbers, to be honest. And, uh, you know, you just have to be realistic in, in what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve. And for us, the, ne the next conversation is we want to do something and be properly competitive again. You know, Blanc Pan's been mega. I've learned a lot, but it's also been really difficult when you're against, you know, cars with like three factory drivers in. Um we haven't got three factory drivers. We don't have one, so it's you know it's a difficult learning curve to be in. But it also makes you push beyond yourself because you have to. Mm. I think you would be fantastic in the British GT Championship. Personally speaking, I, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Well, it's funny you should say that. Genuinely speaking, I would uh, love to do British GT, but my classification is a silver. Uh, from the FIA, which pretty much everyone else's problem is, it, that doesn't particularly help me. Um, I only have one year's experience in a GT3 car. And uh, yeah, for me to do British GT and be competitive, really, I need to be a bronze, which isn't going to happen. So, mm -hmm. whilst I would love it, it'd, it'd you know, be perfect for my sponsors as well. Um, but yeah, whether or not that happens, Tim's trying to look at every option, really. That's one of them. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not holding my breath about that, to be honest, purely and simply due to the rating. Well, never say never. You, you, yeah, you, you it's never know. Cause... Uh, I'd jump at the chance, to be honest. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you would do extremely well in that. I don't want to jinx anything, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it just sounds like a, a natural uh, thing for you to, to sort of do um, if, uh, 
if, if racing in Europe, if you ever got tired of doing in, doing that sort of thing, um, which nobody ever does, to be honest. Um, but uh, yeah, on um, other questions that I had as well, um, because you've raced against so many great riders as well, I mean, you've raced with, alongside, growing up, um, with current BSB stars who uh, and, and other people who are heading towards BSB now as well. Who do you think, Josh, in your opinion, is possibly the the best rider that you've raced against? Talk about putting me on the spot. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> who's the best rider? Um, there's a few answers to that question. Um, I don't mean to open a whole can of political worms if there's like still unfinished arguments between you and like half a paddock or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> no, the um, I grew up racing with a kid called Christian Eden, um, who we actually spoke about before the interview started. He's from your village, but Christian hasn't had like necessarily ultimate success in BS, but you know he's doing a fantastic job. But uh, I. I grew up racing motocross with Christian. I used to go riding with him even when we were doing British Super Spot together. But that kid, in terms of bike control and bike feel, uh, in in clement conditions when it's damp and somebody's got a gun to your head, he's special. You know, I, I remember being on track with him at Thruxton and just, you know, he, he is a special kid. Like, and he's just no nothing phases him. Doesn't matter how much he's moving around. You know, he's just. Is a is mega kid. Um, I was teammates with Jimmy Hill, which is Tommy Hill's little brother. Mm. Um, Jim's one of my best mates, so I'm slightly biased, but Jim's probably one of the best riders that kind of never progressed. Really, um, absolutely crippled with injuries. I mean, Jim rode for us for, for a couple of years, and the poor kid, every time he fell off, he broke something. And uh, yeah, Jim kind of got to a point where he was injured and. Kind of ran out of money, but I, I think on his day, Jim, before it kind of went wrong, Jim was, you know, probably as good of a lad as I've raced with. Um, but then again, you know, I, I raced against Lee Johnson, who's absolutely killing it at the TT. Um, you know, Lee's a mega rider, smooth rider, proper lad. Um, in terms of cars, I mean, Scirocco Cup, Jordan Pepper, uh, I mean, Jordan's mega kid. You can put him in anything, and uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's never far away. Qualified, qualified eighth in in Super Pole at Spa, twenty four hours out of sixty guys. You know, he's, I'd say Jordan's probably one of the most talented kids that I've raced against. You know, he's a Josh. Good friend, friend, friend. Josh, you're breaking up. Oh, sorry, mate. But yeah, I don't know what happened. Then. Oh, oh, crazy. Give me a heart attack. Um, no, sorry. Yeah, carry yeah, on. Josh, you Josh is a good kid. Yeah, uh, he's yeah. But you know, then again, I've shared a I've shared a team this year with arguably some of the best GT drivers in the world. You know, mm. so and former you know, and uh, I think former Formula One drivers as well. I think. Yeah, you've got Marcus Vinkelock. He's you know, been driver coaching us in TC Cup for the last two or three years, and then I shared shared a team with him this year. You've got Robin Frins, you've got you know Jake Dennis, Dries Van Tor, um, you know the Fassler. Oh, you know, you it's surreal. I'm sat there in in the pits, and I've got Marcel Fassler watching my onboard video. You know, and he telling me what you know what's what, and you've got you know I'm sat there with Jamie Green. Jamie's watching it, telling me to take a bit more curb here, get on the gas there. You know that. The, the the guys that you're surrounded by, it's like you've got to pinch yourself a little bit. They are, you know, it, the most surreal part of it is you sat there and they're just talking to you like they've known you all their life. You know, they, they're all down to earth, super guys, mm. do anything to help you. I think that kind of show that really gives you an idea just of how talented somebody actually is when they're willing to help you. Um, I think a lot of people who don't want to help you are quite insecure, and they don't want to help you because they're sort of fearful that you're gonna overtake them and the, the guys that have been fortunate to be surrounded by this year you know that confident in their own ability that they will tell you everything that's uh, an interesting uh, an interesting uh, point of view yeah because uh, like i like i said previously i mean you're in a, uh, a very unique 
position in that you you've 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 rode with some of the best uh current um riders in 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 bsb and you know you've you've raced alongside many great people uh on four wheels as well and uh will no doubt probably continue to do so in in some capacity somewhere um so josh uh you are from where huddersfield yeah home first to be exactly yeah home first and uh, you've always lived there have you uh, i yeah i've lived well lived in lived five minutes away in huddersfield with my parents and yeah just flown the nest about 12 months ago and i'm a big boy now and i'm living on my own in huddersfield hey, no, I'm first, sorry. fair enough um so yeah, washing yeah it's it's um a big big thing to 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 do i suppose uh those who have not yet uh, left the parents homes um but yeah um so i i don't think i've yet asked you yet what your plans actually are for 2018 what do you have um in mind what you're going to be racing where and what options might you have well at this moment in time we're kind of looking down the gt4 route uh which would probably be european gt4 um what that's in and what that looks like to be honest i can't really tell you because we're we're still kind of weighing up what's what um I would, I would kind of have a bit of a tickle for uh, TCR, to be fair. Um, TCR UK? Yeah, I do, if I'm honest, because I would quite like to come home. Um, but as and what that looks like, I don't know. Um, it might be that that might be a second year thing. You know, I mm. don't want to kind of go there too early, really. Um, that's the, the, it's the difficult one because it's a new championship and it might be the might be the best championship we've ever seen. And I hope it is. Um it's just a gamble in terms of... It's a big unknown, isn't it? Yeah, you know, and unfortunately, we do have to think about sponsors and stuff, and, you know, what coverage they're getting and what, you know, how many people are there and what's on TV and what's not. And yeah. It, and you know, do, yeah. it might be that that's a second-year thing, but it's definitely on the radar, like, because I do have a lot of fun driving the TCR-style cars. You know, the TT Cup is basically a TCR car with ABS. Hmm. Good to know. Okay. Um, and uh, finally, uh, then, um, I think I've asked you, um, I think I've gone through my, my list of, of questions uh, for you, ultimately. But um, where do you sort of draw your inspirations from? And, and do you still have the same heroes today, if, if you do at all any, as you did when you were growing up and, and racing on two wheels? And who are they? Yeah, I think for one guy that's in particular, I mean, my childhood, hero was Jeremy McGrath basically um yeah the the uh I mean I was just in awe of him as, as a kid racing motocross he was pretty much the coolest guy on the planet um my biggest inspiration thereafter um Tommy Hill to be honest uh in BSB but Tom's one of my uh one of my really good friends uh been friends for a long time and his work ethic, the the amount he puts in, I mean, he's retired now, but the amount of effort and commitment both on and off the track, fitness, every, you know, every single aspect of what he did, he, did, he, he could never work hard enough. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I guess he was a massive inspiration on and off because I just felt like when you're surrounded by people that put in that much effort, you can't... You it's can't, infectious, isn't it? Yeah, you can't not get dragged along by that. And, you know, I'd say... Tom formed a, a big part of my work ethic for for everything I do. You know, I put a lot of effort into training. I've carried a lot of my bike racing ethics in terms of fitness across the cars, mainly because it's instilled into me from being a kid. But the um, you know, to I, I used to go out cycling with Tom, Jim, with Tom, and he. I don't know. I guess I was just in awe of just quite how much effort he did put in, and yeah, he'd, I basically used to try and gauge myself on on him really um so yeah i, I guess tom's probably a, a pretty big part of my a, a big role model would you say uh, on and off the track really okay and uh, i know that was my final question but i've just thought of another final question sorry um since you're on i may as well just ask you anyway um because otherwise we may never know um if you could have any any vehicle let's say one dream vehicle that would last you for the rest of your life, car, bike, whatever, if it just had to be one, um, either something you've already been 
racing or driving or riding on previously or it's something that you've always always wanted to aspire to to have or own or whatever but if you just have to have one vehicle for the rest of your life what would you pick i'm gonna go on and make a rash decision and say a lamborghini aventador interesting any any particular That's reason um yeah, Batman's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> okay, yeah. That's as good a reason as any, I suppose. I, I've never seen anyone unhappy getting out of an Aventador, mate. That's the... I've... Yeah, I don't, I don't have too many friends who, who have <laughs> those cars, to be honest. So I, I can't really say, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for it, I suppose, um, since you're probably in close proximity to... To those vehicles i suppose <laughs> and, and a lot more than i am anyway um but great to have you on the uh, on on motorsport radio uh for the first time josh um we'll uh, love to uh, to have you back uh through 2018 wherever you end up uh racing if it is uh back home in the uk doing whatever uh i know it's it's, it's still way too probably early at the moment i mean it's not even new year yet but uh, um whatever you end up doing in whatever um, wherever, good luck. Thank you, mate. Now I'd uh, love to catch up again, and thank you for your time.